Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been uh, it's been a little bit since I've put anything out. The whole COVID thing, I think my last thing was like a taste testing of one of my my uh, sample beers. Been super busy with uh, the COVID thing uh, being essential. And even with that, I still, uh, you know, Chevy Chase, you know, still put on about five pounds of COVID weight. So I'm um, super excited about that. But I'm really excited today because I get to start on my electric brew panel. So I've had this in my head for maybe eight months or a year, something like that. And just, you know, waiting mainly on funds and time and stuff to be able to do it. Mainly, mainly funds because it's not cheap. But again, really excited because I get to start building this today. This is going to be built out in phases. This video is most likely going to be multiple chunks so I have to paint the wiring a lot of fab and everything but I'm gonna try to film pieces of this as I go through it it's not gonna be a full like step-by-step -step tutorial but uh, just kind of almost documenting the process my goal with this is you know get it done and then um, I actually took some vacation so I'm gonna be able to get this done do a couple test runs with water and then turn around and come up and you know do a full brew session on it. My my goal with this is still to retain the ability to use my double batch system, full electric, and then uh, still go down and use my smaller eight gallon kettle too for kind of I like doing that. It's lower volume for my my test recipes and stuff. So so why go electric? There's there's a lot of advantages to it. Biggest thing is is just money and efficiency and stuff. And if you've ever ran out of propane on a, on a boil, uh, you've been there and you totally understand. Electricity, unless I guess power goes out, which I don't have a huge issue with. with. But uh, to me, it's really just kind of taking all that uh, busy work of my brew day and just fine tuning it. So and gaining that like consistency with with my brew. I'm starting to venture out a lot more into you know, trying different things, doing my own recipes now and things like that. So I want to be able to see, you know, hey, if I mash at 152 or I back that down to you know, 148 or 147 or 149, or what, what's that taste like? What's that, you know, and, and know that I'm at that temp too. Uh, it also kind of takes out troubleshooting in a recipe. If you're doing something and you got kind of a weird flavor or you got something that's like, okay, this is dry or this is this or this is that, you kind of take some of that brew process out of the element or out of the equation and you can focus on, you know, is it my water? Is it, uh, you know, did I, do I need to change a hop? Do I need to, you know, change a hop addition like a time or something like that? So again, coming back and, and having that consistency, brewing with electric is really efficient. And I like the fact that you kind of like set it and forget it and I can, I can just kind of walk away and just hit my time. So again, really looking forward to it. There's a lot of pieces to this and, uh, and I'm going to get after it here, but uh, to take you through all this, uh, I'll, I'll show the wall over there where I'm going to mount this, this panel. I had to go with a, a much smaller panel than you would typically use or what, from what I'm seeing from other people's builds. So this is a 12 by 16 NEMA, NEMA rated box. I think it's a NEMA 3, it might be a NEMA 4. Um, but I found that it's going to fit where I want. It's not that deep. It's only 6 inches, but that's what I wanted based on my space. Done a lot of measurements. It's going to be tight, but it should fit. I think when I get into wiring this thing, we're going to see the, the complications that I run into. But I, you know, hopefully I have looked at all those not going to have an issue or not have an issue that I can't um, you know, figure out. So I've got silicone to seal up any stuff. I'm not going to try to make this fully waterproof. Uh, just kind of like we'll say like water resistant. Um, you know, paint after I, I do all my fabrication work and everything I can get a good coat of paint on it. Some screws for my outlets. Tons of uh, you know, little sticky mounting bases to keep my, my wire management. I want you know to be extremely clean when it's all done. Nothing like opening a panel and seeing like a bird's nest in there. Tons and tons of zip ties. The key GFCI two pole breaker, so 30 amp. This this is what saves your life. Um, in addition to your ground too, which we'll go into in a little bit. Um, 
and you know safety note too I'm, I'm gonna wire this thing I'm not a certified electrician but I do know how to do it um, I'd recommend if you uh, are doing anything like this that you should get a certified electrician or find a buddy or something like that and, uh, that's all we're gonna go into but uh, don't try this at home it's got my SSR relays bunch of switches and LEDs so no on this with having such a small path panel I had to really kind of like change some things I had to go with a different heat sink just because of the depth of depth of the box now we get two of these up here so you know an extremely large heat sink is just not gonna fit but these two smaller ones will so again just making adjustments based on the size of my box I went with Denrail components they are much much lower profile and you know not much of a price difference so it made sense to do plus it really cleans things up in my opinion uh, obviously all my leds so this led buzzer combo save space led slash switch combo also again save space all things again to make this fitness panel originally i was going to try to go with like a 12 by 12 by 6 all I could find online was a 12 by uh, 16 by 6 so looking at my design now I'm, I'm glad I went with that because I would have never fit all of it I did decide to go with all the uh, timer switches and everything so even though I have a very simple timer relay this does not have like all my programmable steps which is not a major concern to me uh, if I'm off by like 30 seconds that's not really gonna matter much I'm doing a hop edition or something I had to go to this smaller one to save on space. I can live with it. Uh, but all the PIDs have a high and low alarm. Timer has an alarm. So I want to be able to capture all those so I have all the switches and everything. And I have a CAD drawing of all my electrical wiring and my panel layout, which I'll probably throw up here. I also have my parts build list uh, with the total at the bottom, uh, the dollar figures. So all my wiring, tent gauge, I got, I, I, 12 gauge is just what I had available to me. Um, lots of online resellers have electrical wiring kits. If you don't want to go and buy a bunch of wire, I'd, I'd recommend it. Um, all my wire management stuff, all my spade forks. Uh, I went with a volt amp combo meter. I do want to see where I'm at, even though it's kind of like just a luxury. I don't necessarily need it. I'm going to know if I'm firing my element or not. But again, I just want to kind of see it, but I had to go with the volt amp combo again for space. And uh, when I when you view my design, you'll you'll understand why. Pre-made jumpers for my temp probes, they are silicone wrapped, so easy cleaning. And I just pre-made pre-made wires for all you know inside the box for the temp probes. It's like a dollar more to just get them pre-wired, and to me it's like that's yeah, worth a buck. So you know, I buy that for a dollar, right? Here's all my 16 gauge wiring. So this will be all my LEDs and kind of the, the low current stuff, all the PIDs and everything. Cause, uh, I haven't done the math on it, but I know that's all low current stuff, so I, I don't have to worry about much. But this is this is like 90, 95% of my parts. Again, I'm gonna get after it today. This is gonna be built out in phases. I'm thinking it's gonna take me three days, maybe the week to get, get through. I'm going to start with fabbing up my box, kind of figuring out where it's going to mount on the wall, get it painted, stuff like that, and then I'll go into pulling out the uh, back plane inside. So I'll show you that here too. Pulling out the back plane and actually, oh, I hate turning my back to the camera, but my camera person is still asleep, uh, which happens often because I get up really early in the morning. Anyway, so this has got the back plane, so everything will get mounted to this. I should have enough enough depth here for all my components even though some of them are extremely deep but uh, if I run into an issue I will do some type of uh, modification to the box to make this plate sit back further or something to that effect because I really the only thing that needs to be mounted on this is just my din rail mount which will be like two or three screws so we'll see how it goes because you know despite best efforts planning and measurement and AutoCAD and everything real world often comes back to bite you so we'll see where I'm at. Uh, this has got a weird access panel on the top. Uh, it's designed to be waterproof and stuff but that's where my heat sinks are going to go. I 
I've seen it sealed up with JB Weld. I, uh, I know how to weld, I have a welder, so I'm actually just gonna tack it in place in a couple of key spots. If you don't have that, you can use JB Weld, it'll work just fine. You're just trying to kind of like hold it in place where the SSRs are gonna, or where the heat sinks and SSRs are gonna mount. You could flip the box over too, but then you're gonna deal with this with all your outlets, which in my opinion is not, um, not fantastic. And I forgot my L, so, you know, pause. Back in. My outlets, L630 twist lock. I'm not going to go with like the insert and stuff. They end up taking up a ton more room in your box. And I don't think it's really necessary. So I'm just going to mount a irregular outlet in there and just do the circular hole. So like if you were to look up from the bottom of the box, you would just see, you would just see the, the, this in, uh, insert of the outlet, you know, kind of poking through. And I'm just going to go with a, a regular 15 amp, you know, dual pole outlet for, for 110. That'll be, you know, pump one, pump two, so water pump, water pump. Because uh, you can you could just pull this tab off or cut this tab off, and that splits your outlet. If you go into a house or something, you know, lots of people, or lots of times with construction, you'll have like, uh, you know, constant, and then you'll run like a switch for a light out of the same outlet. So that's all I'm really gonna do is wire these separate and split them, and they share the common ground. So this is the, this will be the L630 twist lock on the side of the go to the kettle. Note, I don't have all my elements and stuff here. It's still, it's still shipping, but that'll come in and that'll be, that'll be probably the last phase of getting all my elements and stuff. I totally plan to film all that too and go through all the uh, difficulties that that's going to be. So on to mount the box. Here's where I intend to put this, which is nice. I mean, I have my power panel right here for the house, so I will. I'm gonna. I plan to direct wire this. It's gonna save me a plug on the end and space in the box because again, it's it's uh, small. I have 12 inches between the standoff stud to mount the garage door over this panel, so I think it'll go right there. I just need to figure out exactly how high I want it and go ahead and put some two by fours across here to, to be able to go ahead and screw into uh, once that's kind of done. Uh, obviously I'm gonna have to move this stuff, but once that's done, I can go ahead and start the next piece of this, which is fabbing the box up. Just a 16 ounce East Wing hammer. If you've done construction, you know the importance of getting a good brand. And that's my little heating element. I used to heat my heating water up or my cleaning water up. This is done, maybe I won't need that anymore. We'll see. Everything I can see everything. Oh shit! What did I say? Sixty-nine. Okay, so over here definitely uh, definitely gonna have to go some more. Here's my other GFCI outlet, which I previously used for my pumps. I'm gonna keep that in place. I still use my pressure washer and stuff, and I guess kind of as a backup, or if I want to run my heating element separate. But you know, it's like this is only you know 15 amp. It's only ran off a of 110, so between your your uh, L1 black and then neutral. So in this panel is gonna be 30 amp, 220, 240. So it's a, it's gonna be two pole off of L1, L2, so red and black, or black and red, rather. Um, so let me get this mounted. I'm just gonna go ahead and do two little, two little chunks of two by four and then pin them in with some screws or something here.
Five and five eighths. Let's get that one cut in. All right, five and five eighths. Leave my line. I want it a little snug. Leave the line. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I need to put some some drilled holes, some pre-drilled holes with a countersink bit in order to build one screws into the side. I'm not gonna nail and I obviously don't want to penetrate the side of this box. So um, but uh, you know here I'll be able to go ahead and just pin into this these uh, cripple studs. There we go. For the support in the header. But on this side, I'm going to need to pin into these, so. Not holding up a lot of weight, but definitely want something there. So that's that's the side that I want up. I've already measured out kind of where I want it. And I go up at my line. I have much larger screws, but I don't think I necessarily need them. This isn't getting a lot of weight. and I'll take that. If you had something heavier, you could put a bigger screw or like a little mini lag or something on it. But, uh, so you see them level, plumb. This is what I wanted right here was, uh, I don't want to be out past this and like have this big gawky piece here. And, and no too, even this sticks out a lot, but uh, still acts just my electrical box just fine. There's nothing impeding me from that. I can completely you know, reach everything. My all oh, this wide angle is weird. My thoughts with this was I thought about coming over here, but I got my comp panel and. Uh, I didn't want to be like constantly like walking over here and then too with all my cords that were going to come off I don't want to be like having cords draped across like my trash and my, my radio and everything like that so usually I brew like right here in front of the door I got my water runoff and everything so I wanted everything real you know quick and accessible so um, plus I'm right next to my electrical panel so all I got to do is and, and run into it and I'm I'm hot, so uh, still gives me plenty of room to access everything. God, I can't wait. This is gonna be good. All right, so it's box mounted. The next thing I'm gonna tackle now is going ahead and getting this plate. But well, kind of my thoughts with this is, you know, they'll, they'll mount centered here. Um, I still have the two screw holes on the side that are going to be visible, so that's just going to get a screw. And then these, I think, I will I will weld up and just kind of fill the hole, let it cool, sand it down so that you know, when, this, when this covers it too, I don't I want to be able to see any welds or you know, any type of like box modification just because I'm a visual aesthetics guy too. And then we'll come back and we'll We'll center on where the, uh, the SSRs are going to mount on the inside of the box. You know, to these. So, and didn't show up before. Here's my, and I, and I got multiple layers of this to turn on with all my labels and, and 
stuff, but this is my, this is what I did so I know all my measurements to pull off of a single point, know where I need to drill. That'll come here after I figure this, uh, this heat sink piece out. And then here is my master wiring diagram. I actually do gotta make an update to this too because I got my volt ammeter shipped in yesterday and it has obviously the other pins on there. So I wanna capture everything. I do have my, the, the pin outs and everything for my temp probes. And I, just, I, I had that layer turned off because it's pretty straightforward. They already color coded for me. This is, this is my road map to wire this pig up in a couple days. So um, we'll see how it goes here. Anyways, I want to get on this. All right, so problem one. For the life of me, I cannot find the screws in the silicone gasket that went, or not silicone gasket, but just gasket that went in the top of this thing. So we're on the plan B, which means I'll, um, well, I'm not going to silicone it down, I don't think, because we're going to just weld it anyways, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's going to use a little bit different screw on it. Right now, I just need it to hold in place so I can weld it. All right, I found something here. Level of excitement diminishing. All I really need is something to hold it. So there. And now I need to I need to expose a bare metal on this so the weld will take. quite a bit of weld that I'm going to have to hit, but it should, uh, it should work just fine. Since I want to weld with gravity, because that's easier, I'm going to bring this down. We should, we need a grounding weld, obviously, so uh, I'm just going to use the grounding lug that's actually in here. Make sure you turn your shielding gas on. I do not have a lot left, of course. I think that's a 16 gauge box. I'm using 0.35 wire. Voltage 3, wire speed 4. Voltage 3, wire speed 4. We'll try that. And then, well, 
And I'll try it at three and a half. I usually like to run a little hotter voltage. Everyone's kind of got their own little preference. Yes, I'm in shorts. Yes, I'm in a weld with in a short sleeve shirt. I'm making four little welds. I'm not too concerned about it unless a hot ember gets me in the leg. Good enough for the beer I drink. Yep. I gotta get those ground down and start measuring for the uh, heat sinks. So, I need to invest in some new gloves, some welding. Yep, that's me. They'll mostly work. Here we go. Just gonna hit it real quick at a sander. <coughs> Not to get too crazy because this is all gonna be hidden. Otherwise, I, you know, potentially hit these couple of low spots with weld and bring it up, or you know, potentially hit some bondo. You know, because this is all gonna get painted. But uh, let me hit it with a sander here and see what it does. So, uh, you know, this was my thought again. I will center this like so. Still got my two screws. It'll get, you know, screwed down and mounted here, and then I'll cut the opening in the bottom for the SSRs. Thinking now that I'm going to paint this, I really should have scuffed all this before I, before I welded it down. But we're past that because I'm not drilling these out, so we're going to make, make do. So plan C, we're on. Take my back plane out, so I got a little, a little bit of room to work here. Half inch 916s, but it's probably, probably metric. duty back plane. Wow. You see this too, it's got it's got these nuts here as the standoffs and this is actually just pressed through from the back. They're not pressed, they're just actually sitting in the back almost kind of like a uh, why can I not think of the name right now? Sticking through from the back if I need to decrease this back plane depth I can I can just put like a, a regular nut on there I think and, and bring it down. We'll see how it goes here. I'm going to clean this inside up because my my weld, of course, went through and uh, it looks like crap. So, go with an 80 grit. Which we'll do with later here. But I need 
the amount my kids eat. So. Anyways, things to consider here, which I'm looking at. There's the upright placement of where I want everything in front of the back. And front to back, I would think I want center, but I kind of want to cover this uh, gap. So if I would do that, I can use my back to, to pull my pull my measurement off. So when I go inside the box, other than like the thickness of the metal, which might put it off to the pitch. to consider right and I'm not to get this way versus this way. I look at where my pre-drill holes are for my SSR. I prefer to not have it this way and then have to do my wiring on the front and back. It's gonna be difficult. Whereas if I go like this, uh, that'll be good cable flow when I come up and in and then back out essentially. So definitely gonna go sideways with it. see any issues and I do want to center it too so that my cutout I'm not having to take anyone out of the box preferably I can just cut out of this plate and um your GB weld and it's going to be just fine. Really you're just trying to make this a solid mounting surface for your relays and it's not like you're heavier or anything like that so from a structure standpoint it's not critical I guess. Make myself some lines and where I'm at. The good news is these tap holes go through my heat sink so I should be able to actually take a small bit or uh, or at least a scribe or something and mark my holes so I know where to drill through so I know where to pin my screws through from the bottom side and get those mounted and with those screw holes then I'll know also where to do my my hole on the, the inside of the panel to allow for the relays to go up and mount. on the side while that one's really curving now that I look at it from the top, but not, not really an issue. The bit that I have that's actually small enough to get through this hole, I'm not going to have enough chuck on it to be able to drill, so this is a little bit of an issue. Takes the wind out of that sail. This is the part that it's not going to work. So that's not going to work, which means I'm down to this. Uh, I know that I don't like doing this. So, see my holes, I got eight. Not, I don't like doing this. It's not the right tool to do this with, but it's going to work. These are going to suck. They are right on the edge. So hopefully I'll be able to drill that. It's not really a concern when I put the bolt or the screw through on the bottom side. But I got to get that hole. And I'm going to make them a little bit enlarged so I have a little bit of room and I can really get my heat sinks right where I want them before I, I mount them in tight. So I'll work with 
this. You know, it's got to happen if it's something you're not fantastic at doing or don't want to attempt, you know. Uh, my recommendation is to find a buddy. Find a buddy that likes to drink beer. Find a buddy that likes to drink your beer and get him excited about doing this uh, for you. <laughs> with you uh, and and of course too there's all kinds of pre-built kits out there and stuff too with guys that do this and that's their living so um, but I'm the guy like I, I like to build stuff so case in point set this on there per se because I don't want to get the oil and stuff all over it. I just want to kind of check my check my holes. And it looks good. So check it again. Well my calculations are correct. I think that should be okay. So you see here's all my penetrations here um, back plane sits here so I shouldn't have any obstructions with where that sits um, can be kind of close to my back plane something I didn't uh, inherently think about but it should clear uh, the biggest thing was that if this screw head was going to be on the lip uh, the top you know the head of the screw from underneath but this looks like it's going to be okay. So I'm going to clean up all these little burrs with the uh, disc sander real quick and start getting all the little fragments up here and kind of cleaned up a little bit. Pretty well cleaned up. So this is stuff you run into with, uh, you know, fabbing stuff up. So, and and hence why I made these holes a little bit bigger. But these all hit good. This one is uh, a little bit off, and that one's a little bit off too. So I'm gonna say you know, plus two, plus one. So we're gonna we're gonna open those up a little bit. So. mounted up so you don't see a gap there which is kind of nice if you're looking at it from the front and um, you see underneath I gotta get a washer on that one but uh, I'll clean up all the discoloration and everything from the welds and probably hit it with a little bit of primer clean it up and um, it turned out really good I gotta make my cuts yet though these actually sit in there like this but I know where I need to make a cutout from the SSR, you know, to sit from the bottom side. You should be able to pull off with these screw holes, measure to this, and then measure a template on this to know what to cut out. I'll probably give myself about a quarter inch clearance around, uh, assuming that that much space is allowed on the inside. That's a half inch from the screw hole. So, from the back of the box, I'm at three quarters, so a half will be up to one inch, and then I'll be at one, one and a quarter. So, that'll be one and a quarter. Check here.
sure if I want to do this with my air saw or if I want to do it with a die grinder. We'll try the air saw and see what it does. Just need to get a hole so I can get my bit in. So we got this all cut, which was of course way more work than I intended it to be, like most things. But uh, so this should mount really close to about something like that. You see, we got plenty of surface area for the heatsink and uh, my SSRs It'll stick through. So nice little leadway and. Keep cleaning this up and all right so lots of cutting grinding filing you know buying all the edges and the ruffers and everything off but so I'm kind of looking at what it's gonna look like on the bottom of the panel now granted I'm not gonna do that yet I really want to get started on the top of my panel just to make sure that I'm not having any major unforeseen issues that I might have to order something since obviously there's leak type on that so that'll be the next piece, but again, I'm looking at this. Um, I think what I'm most likely going to do here, again, small panel, lots going on. Mini monkeys this way, but I think I'm gonna keep it all like this. This is the power side for me. I'm not doing an insert twist lock. It's just gonna get hardwired. I don't know why you really need to do a twist lock in it unless you were making it movable to different locations or something. So I think I'm going to do my three temp probes right here because I don't really want those stringing across my power cord. Or yeah, I don't want those over my power cords. It should, you know, I want those. Those are smaller than my power cords and then my pump. Granted, it's probably going to be a nightmare anyways, but. I'll measure all that out. I want to keep enough space in between these so that um, you know, you can be at two outlets side, side by side in a like a dual game box. That's the kind of distance I'm thinking. Again, this will be my pump and or my pumps, and then this will be my my power feed. And I'm gonna try to give this enough room. Should I ever need to make this mobile? So I'm not having to do a major panel modification, but it's kind of plain. I have the outlet covers for these that I'll use as a template. But that's the intent is that like if this were the bottom of my box, then all you'd see is that plug kind of sticking out. And these they're gonna be an absolute pain to, to cut out, especially this one. Because this stuff is, is a bit thicker than I thought it was, but again, just like that, that'll be the bottom of my box and then label and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and tape off the top of this box uh, with painter's tape and pull all my measurements to, to see where my cuts are going to be and once again check depth and, and spacing and everything. Okay, here we go. Yeah, but... 
you bet it's way cheaper than this stuff is. I don't have any, and I'm not going to the store unless I have some. Mmm, fingers crossed. I did a ton of measuring, I wish I had my combination square. So I have measured the top of this panel out, you know, precisely down to an eighth of an inch, dropped it into AutoCAD, every component on here is measured out. It's just a ton of measurements. Oh man, I really can't see. Yeah, I get an old sucks. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and measure all this out based off of my CAD drawing here and see where everything lines up, what it looks like. Again, kind of just look for clearances, put the bin rail inside, cut that to length. And before I start cutting this main panel, because I really don't want it to do fills up here if I mess up. Um, but I guess that's the, uh, that's the backup plan. So. So I have everything measured out based off my CAD drawing. The PID controllers are actually a little bit smaller than the measurements off the website, so I basically just drew those in a thick line inside the small line as a spacer, and I'll just cut on the inside of that line. And the goal would be that I literally have to file out the last little bit to, I mean, I want it as tight as possible in there uh, to include the timer. So. And the timer was also a little bit smaller. Looking at all this, I've, I've done a ton of measurements with these, uh, you know, with the door closing and is it going to clear this, and I know it's going to get snug. If I run into a serious jam where it's hitting, and it shouldn't be by much, and I, I would notch like the inner lip of the door if I really had to. Don't want to, but if that's what it had to be. I can't bring these too much further in because on this side, it's going to have a key, so I don't want that right onto my, my panel. This is going to be my red LED with emergency power off, and you know, that's going to be awfully close to that PID as well. Again, small panel. I could have eliminated some things, like um, didn't really need an EPO. That's a luxury. Didn't need the key switch. That's a luxury. Could have really went like micro with this thing, but trying to get full functionality and everything I wanted in it. Looking at these bottom switches, one, you know, not having this drawn on the panel, I did not realize these were this low. However, uh, I guess it showed it on the drawing, but it did look like I had a little bit more space than that. Where did that look like that for space? Inch and three sixteenths. And that's exactly what I got, so my concern is this, is uh, where this switch is going to mount. Uh, and look, these are going to be in the bottom of my panel. I'm hitting, uh, even if I turn it, which I, I can't if it's going to be a switch, I can't turn it. But the piece will be that this is the actual mounting depth. And then if these mount in the middle there, I'll have clearance. And I mean, she's going to be tight. Just like it is with my dim rails, I want to say a couple of the contacts. There's like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch clearance. So we'll see where I end up on it. I'm going to go ahead and, and start probably, I'll cut these out first because those are going to be the harder pieces, I think. And then um, go in and uh, do all my drills for, for all my holes and, and kind of really start seeing where this is going to add up. I am going to look at this too real quick with my DIN rail mount and see where that lines up just to make sure I don't have clearance issues with that. I know that I'm going to have some issues when I wire this up. I know it's going to end up being really snug. I'm bound to have some type of problem. Serious. Uh, I'm, sure you know, but I'm 
I'm going to cut this down. It's the only thing this is going to get is one more relay that I'm waiting on. One, yeah, one, one relay. So cut this to length, I think. Put it in there and kind of see. I want it to split these switches. And I might have to go up here more. I, I don't know. Man, it's going to be tight. This one right here, this main, this main switch. So this is a <clears throat> combination two-way switch, or three-way switch rather, so on, off, on, to select my elements, and it's an LED. So to avoid back feeding, which I'll show later in my wiring, I had to do another set of normally open contacts on the back, which makes this thing like almost to the back of the box. And literally the only way it's gonna clear is because where I laid this out, I have this dip here, and it should fit right there, which hopefully I don't run into wiring issues. And, and again, maybe when I come in with my wiring, I'm gonna have to come up and then bend in, rather than just come out and start pulling. So, it'll be fun. Uh, if I pull it all off, I'm gonna be, I'm be real proud. Proud of myself. Good job. Cut my DIN rail down. Still missing this relay. I gave myself just a little bit on each side, but just enough room to get it in here. But it'll go. I'm looking because I may need to try to split a row here, but the big thing is even in splitting that row and having that larger switch right there. Then I, I still have this wiring that's got to go on the bottom of the panel, and uh, I can't see uh, what you can't you do. Uh, so this is going to hold all about there-ish. My outlets still need to be able to go in there. This is, again, another reason, too, why I did not want to go with like that larger insert, because those are extremely deep. And i got to come out of this with wiring these with wiring and literally let go over there. So it is going to be challenging when it comes to actually doing the wiring and all this, uh, just keeping everything routed. It's going to be a very, very full box. But I am confident it can be done. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's never been done in this small box. I don't know. Well, this is what I got. So you're going to Go ahead and start cutting everything up top. And if that all looks good to me, I will start doing the bottom outlets, which is where I'd like to finish out today. My goal is going to be to have all the cutting and uh, major fab, fab work done hopefully today, and then hopefully you can get this thing in primer, or else at least be ready to like clean, finish cleaning it up, sanding and stuff, and get it in primer first thing tomorrow. But as far as like time, you know, the, the primer can dry overnight. As precise as possible so that uh, things don't look off. So with that, I don't want my drill bit walking. It's going to kind of get out here. Here we go, we're coming up on point of no return. So I got this first one knocked out with the air saw, and, and like I was saying, you can see where I came in on the inside of my line off my measurement, and I mean this is almost going in there, but not quite. So there's a gasket that goes around this, and, and you see here this lip is really, really, really tiny. I mean that's like a sixteenth 
of an inch, maybe a 30 second. It's small. So I want this to fit as tight as possible. I'm going to file this smooth on each side and just keep taking a little bit off, a little bit off until that goes in and I'm going to do that for all of these. So i got a switch here, LED, I'm getting ready to drill these holes and I just want to make sure that uh, these are all going to be the same size. 0.46, same thing. Yeah, they're, they're exact, so basically if this fits, then my switches will fit. couple different step bits I intend to use on this. Or you get these with penetrating oil. This measured out here on the bottom. Uh, what I think is going to work here. So, uh, where's the ground? Uh, I'll go this way. So it should be. Should be these. So it'll kind of look like this. I'll have my. It'll kind of look like this. I'll have my three temp probes in there. I got enough room to do my labels. Element one, element two, two pumps, and then this will be my power in, and then of course my power relay is on that side of the DIN rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, and uh, I'm running out of battery. So this uh, this panel turned into work like rapidly. So I was just pushing through trying to find a good breaking point, which was mainly getting all the fabrication or the heavy fabrication done.